Glamour magazine, the UK version, puts what they are calling a quote unquote pregnant man on the cover of their magazine. Just wait till you get a load of this. Wait till your eyeballs have to experience this photo. There's some interesting analysis that we're going to discuss when it comes to this um, delusion that they're indulging and whether or not this, this indulging this delusion is a kind thing to do. There was a debate online over the weekend about, uh, it started actually because what is a woman, the Daily Wires, the Daily Wires documentary uh, was censored by Twitter. Elon Musk reversed that. And in the process of reversing this censorship of, of this documentary, he promoted it. It got, it, it's been viewed now by I think 80 million people online. But in the wake of, of, this, of this documentary going viral on Twitter, especially after it faced this internal Twitter censorship and a lot of, uh, or a little bit of drama, I think two people on the executive level at Twitter were exited for this stealth censorship. There was a debate online about well, not really the transgender ideology, but how to behave towards people who are identifying as transgender. Because there are a lot of centrists who say are independents, people that maybe aren't quite as based as you or as I, who are saying, well, it's the nice thing to do. It's the kind thing to do. You know, all I'm trying to do is be a good person. So if I, if I, see someone who identifies as transgender, even if they're biologically male, if they identify as female, I'm going to call them she, her by the pronouns that they prefer. There were two people, actually, two prominent people who made this claim. One of them was Elon Musk himself. Simultaneously, while promoting what is a woman, he simultaneously said that he would call people by their preferred pronouns just for the sake of politeness. And then Lex Fridman, who is an Ivy League professor, he's also a, a fairly prominent tech bro. He has a popular podcast. He tweeted that, you know, he's more interested or he's less interested in whether you're a man or a woman or how you identify and more interested in if you're a good person. So I, I want to talk about that specifically because the two things, as much as these centrists want to try to separate the two things, they cannot be separated. So we're going to look at that photo and talk about Glamour Magazine and the stunt they're pulling on their cover. And we're going to talk about um, what it means and how important it is that we reject calling people by so-called preferred pronouns. Okay, so Glamour Magazine in the UK, and this is the picture that I promised you. We can show this on the screen. This is the cover of Glamour Magazine UK. The title of this cover is Trans Pregnant Proud. And then underneath the pregnant belly of this person is the name Logan Brown. Logan Brown identifies as a man. Logan Brown is not a man. Unfortunate that I have to say that. I think we all know that, though. At least those of us who are older than Gen Z know this. I know that one out of every five Gen Zers identifies as LGBTQIA. So maybe for the purposes of the next minute, minute and a half, Gen Z is not included in this because they have been so successfully brainwashed, actually, by people like Logan Brown. I have no idea what what the birth name of Logan Brown is. But they've been, Gen Z has been so successfully brainwashed by people like Logan Brown that perhaps they don't count um, in, in, in this, this comment that I'm about to make. But the rest of us, so that would be Millennial and Gen X and Baby Boomer and the Greatest Generation, we actually all, all, all know this. We're not brainwashed. We know that this person is not a man. We know that men can't be pregnant. We know how to define a woman. We, we know that there is male and there is female. We know that sex is binary. We know that gender identity is not a thing. And we understand that biology is reality. Gen Z, again, for the purposes, a lot of Gen Zers are great. I'm not trying to, to stereotype. However, one out of every five Gen Zers identifies as LGBTQIA+, because of the brainwashing that they have been subject to their entire lives from the time they were infants and toddlers in preschool through public school, all the way through high school and college. And this has been their entire existence on their phone, on social media, inundated and so, again, maybe they are confused. Maybe they have been successfully indoctrinated into believing that a man can be pregnant. But the rest of us, which right now is still the majority of people, are not Gen Z. The majority of adults are not Gen Zers. The rest of us actually know. We just, those, those people who, the people who on the left usually, that use preferred pronouns or the people that virtue signal and pretend that this is a pregnant man, the people that preach inclusivity, they actually know the truth. They're, they're, they might be lying to themselves, they might be lying so much repeatedly over and over and over to themselves that they've convinced themselves that what isn't is, but they actually know. They actually know the truth. We all know the truth. So it's something that I think behooves us to remember that 
dealing with different demographics of people, dealing with different ages of people, uh, it, it is a little different. If you're talking to someone, if I'm talking to someone my age, I can be pretty sure that they actually know the truth. They actually know right from wrong, even if they're pretending that they don't because they're afraid of taking the side of, you know, us, us right-wingers. They know the truth. Gen Zers might not. But when you look at the picture of Logan Brown on Glamour Magazine, we all know that's not a man because men can't be pregnant. Only women can be pregnant. Only women can gestate. Only women can give birth. And by the way, Glamour UK, this is a little bit of a side note, Glamour UK is also the magazine that awarded Caitlyn Jenner the Woman of the Year Award. So this is a very, this is an incredibly um, woke neo-Marxist magazine. It sparks a, a, a thought that I want to walk you through, a thought that I had, because over the weekend, we also had simultaneously with this, with this magazine cover, we had the Daily Wire announce that for Pride Month, they're going to put What is a Woman on Twitter for free, the entire documentary, which is great, super smart move. But when they did this and they started advertising that they were going to live stream this, Twitter actually censored it. They prevented it from, they prevented people from retweeting it. They put a warning on it that it was hateful, bigoted content, which of course is contradictory to what Elon Musk promised he would do about Twitter, which is, um, well, free speech. Free speech is king on Twitter is what Elon Musk said. There wouldn't be censorship based on ideological, ideological uh, viewpoints here. Um, so the Daily Wire did, did a, Jeremy Boring, the CEO of the Daily Wire, did a public thread talking about, you know, what they had faced trying to make this deal with Twitter and how um, in the midst of this deal with Twitter, this, this deal to stream what is a woman, they were told actually once, once, once the people at Twitter who saw the documentary ahead of its streaming saw it, they said, actually, we're not going to do this with you because someone in the, in the film uh, misgenders someone else, and we're not going to allow that to be promoted by Twitter. So, the long, the, the long and short of it is, Elon Musk rectified this. Two two people at Twitter, the head of trust and safety, her name is Ella Irwin, and um, another employee who I believe was the head of ad integrity. They were exited from the company. I don't know if they resigned. I don't know if Elon fired them. I don't know if it was that gray area where they were they resigned because they had to. But someone stealthily at Twitter is still trying to censor conservative viewpoints. They're still trying to push the radical leftist ideology. Elon Musk made that right, which, by the way, I find incredibly encouraging, especially in the wake of, um, I think today actually is the first day that Linda Yaccarino, the CEO of Twitter, starts her job. She's not committed to free speech. She's part of the World Economic Forum. She's challenged Elon Musk on allowing advertisers to serve as de facto censors of what you and I say on Twitter. I think she's a terrible pick. I hope Elon realizes this and changes his mind. Hi guys, it's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.